it's in it's amphetamines, right? <laughs> You will be surprised. <laughs> this is Channel 37, and we're here at the Faco Modular Day in the beautiful Barcelona. I'm here with Paul Toss from Error Instruments. Welcome. Yes, hello. Nice to be here. Hot and sweaty, but yeah. But cool. it's worth it. So it's what are you it. what are you showing today? Uh, we're showing today some cloud busting. We have some uh, liquid glitcher, a lot of tapes. We have the Eurorack tape. What is really a lot of people. Uh, want to have information about and we have the standalone one and yeah. So this is of course extremely eye-catching. It feels mm -hmm. like a combination of the you know the vintage and the modern. What was your inspiration for this and what's the concept actually? The concept, the sound of tapes. Uh, I'm born in the 70s. We're missing tapes. Uh, the new generation uh, thinks MP3 was good or CD but I mean the speed changing of tapes has some special sound, some really uh, kind of emotional sound. If you play a piano on tape and you play the speed lower, it's much more interesting. And what is that element like that makes it interesting? I think it's more about uh, nostalgia. So maybe yeah. I have the feeling, or people from my generation have the feeling. Yeah, I like it that I must tell the new generation of people, if they have a cassette tape like this, yeah. that if you take that one out, that they don't record. and. They, they, they don't know that, yeah. so it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's uh, for them, uh, new, interesting. Yeah. And I think tapes are really cool. Especially loop tapes are nice, mm -hmm. you know. So this is about, uh, in the rack, in the modeler, you have, of course, LFOs, envelopes, a lot of control voltage uh, things, and then you can change the speed or with an LFO uh, on your tape. And that's, okay. that's what it does. I'm seeing your art here, I'm in awe, and I've also seen your art uh, in the past, and I'm wondering, mm -hmm. how, what was this transition like for you from art into sound, and what was the extension of that? It's a little bit a deep story, a long story, but it's more like uh, if you're making sculptures and paintings, that it's only about color and form. Everything that you see around you is made of color and form, so it's quite, kind of empty and the sound was always more di different than the picture. Yeah. So you can go really deep in sound. You can tell a sound it's dark and the sound cannot have a color, but it sounds dark. Like uh, cinematic elements, like David Lynch used to create atmospheres in your scene in life, yeah. you can use this. And that's what I like about sound. So we started making instruments who actually uh, work on emotions, work on go a little bit a different way, not the traditional things. So Sound is very penetrating in that way. It's a really yeah. effective way of communicating something. For me it is. I think it also depends on the person. Some people now we have an ASMR community or some people going really deep in there. Yeah. But uh, it's personal. Some people go really far and some people are just like, uh, oh, this is good enough for me and I stay in this traditional thing. Yeah. So yeah. In my life I don't have really traditionals. I'm always looking for something new. I don't want to have the vanilla milkshake. I want to have the cookie flavored dough with <laughs> banana, chocolate. And yeah. a surprise. And a surprise. Yeah, yeah I understand that. Yeah. So you're, you're into newness, I guess, and uniqueness. Mm -hmm. And all of your modules really uh, represent that. Yeah, it's a little bit chaotic here on the table. We were in a, in a kind of hurry. Mm -hmm. Cloud busting, that's this model. Mm -hmm. It's about changing the weather. There was a, a, a guy making a machine called the Cloudbuster. He was working a half year to changing the weather for farmers. Okay. And then he was captured by the police and he was died in jail. And his student says that he really had a machine who can do that. And, uh, and that he was died on purpose. And this concept of uh, this guy, uh, we make a Cloudbusting uh, model. Okay. And the cloud busting model is a, it's a, it's a synthesizer, digital. Uh, the code is made by a Japanese and an American guy. Okay. Uh, we make the hardware of this. And uh, yes, uh, it's a catchable thing. It has a lot of sounds, okay. but it has a lot of emotions. And um, the sound of the weather, like the rain and this stuff, it's a kind of there somehow. It's purring like a cat. Yeah. Or Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, like a cat.
didn't know you were performing this weekend. Uh, <laughs> Do many of your modules originate from a story that you find intriguing or an idea or a feeling that you'd yeah, like yeah. to capture? Yeah, this okay. is uh, <laughs> Sputnik, the radio Sputnik was already a kind of Russian design. Yeah. The U FB, this is a radio channel that sent already pulses out on the radio for more than 30 years. They don't know where it's from. It's like, uh, they say it's from the Cold War, that they make some special thing. And there is also a kind of voices in there that says a kind of Kilo Alpha Bravo, but then in Russia. And this is looping, and on the internet there's a lot of stories about it, what's happening there and where it's sent from. Okay. Of course, this is not the machine, but I like the concept, the idea. Mm -hmm. And this machine, how it sounds, it really was really close to that sound that I hear there. So it's, everything is like a story. That's very interesting. I really appreciate that, this uh, artistic approach to sound. Yeah, it's important to, uh, to uh, yeah, everything is a story, you know? Yeah. yeah. Liquid glittering is more about textures. Yeah. Some small sound, some bigger sound, some dark, some, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then mix that together. Yeah. That you have the small whispering of a final record or a sub bass that really is sub like a lot of air air in the sound. Like air in the sound is like mm, like mm, like you hear the sub. Breathy. Yeah, yeah, like air. Like. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it's really evil. When I was starting, uh, I had students from the HKU, it's in the Netherlands, uh, an art school. There is a girl called Evia, she's helping me. She was uh, in that time my student, and now I take her uh, as a job for now a few years. So I'm working together with her. Uh, we only as a team, actually. Okay. Of course, uh, I have a lot of friends in Modeler. We started in this a uh, long time ago. People like Erika Sins, Grit, uh, Xor, uh, Soundforce. I know a lot of people because we are doing this for a long time. So you have quite a, ri a rigorous production schedule. I mean, uh, yeah. crazily, crazy amounts of new YouTube videos, modules. How does this happen? We only with uh, two people, but uh, I have a kind of factory like Billy Wonka with Oompa Loompas. Okay, okay, a chain gang. <laughs> and they are there, you know? Okay. So okay. we, yeah. Where do you find them? That's a secret. And you also need a manufacturer for these really Wonka shorts, so that's like a whole other series of uh, Yeah, that's a secret. No, it's, yeah. it's uh, I don't know, we are just really hard workers. Yeah. Um, it's a long story. If you compare myself, if I compare myself to most of the other people, I have a lot of work experience because I was working already when I was a kid, young, because I didn't study, because I could not read. Okay. So I don't need, I just had my leerplicht, but so I was working hard and I can work a lot and we have a lot of inspiration. I have a lot of inspiration, but people need to make it for me sometimes an illustration uh, or an eagle, we mixing with this. We have a lot of uh, creativity that other people must also put out. Okay. Yes. So it's like a kind of mind map. You put a circle around yourself mm -hmm. and you choose how it's going to go. Okay. And the ideas are really endless, a lot of ideas, yeah. It's about uh, finding the right people to help execute them. Yeah, well, we do the production and the design and uh, by ourselves, even sending. Now 60% goes in retail and we have some new retailers coming. Mm -hmm. We have a kind of shop in, uh, in Tokyo, in Japan. So yeah. we are selling from there and from Amsterdam, Netherlands. How important is the DIY element in your company? Uh, yeah, the UI is very important in the beginning. The problem if you work by yourself, uh, people always underrest the UI because the UI gives a lot of questions. Yeah. Sometimes people do it wrong. So if we do the UI, I prefer to do a workshop. Okay. And then the people can ask it straight and make sure they go at home with something that works. Mm -hmm. That's the responsibility if we do the UI. Okay. If we send the UI kits, you need, you need an army to tell, okay, your die-out is the wrong way, or this, that. Okay. 
and this is what I don't want to be on the internet all day. Yeah. It's with the you need time group. for the ideas rather than uh, exactly, them. exactly. Yeah. And the DIY community, I think it's really cool. Uh, everything we made is also based on hardware hacking. So we were circuit vendors. I was circuit vending before a lot. Okay. Yeah. And um, speak and spells and all this kind of stuff. And this is uh, so that's also a kind of DIY. I recommend if people want to go into uh, learning this, to just go to a second-hand store, buying pianos, try to find the pitch, building a potential meter in there. That's a it, really good idea. Yeah, yeah. Also, it's good for environment to recycle uh, things. Yeah. Because uh, that's an aspect we haven't heard about uh, today. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's is, uh, that's yeah. why DIY is important. Yeah. But having the DIY kits and making this at the schematic and do it's nice to learn. It's kind of mantra. But it's a lot of work for the manufacturer to, because if you sell 100 kits, 10 people will do it wrong. They you contact you. I prefer a workshop. 10 people have a great day, good lunch, and go to home with something that works, and everybody have a good day. So if I have some DIY, I will sure send you something. Yeah. Uh, what if we you can have a workshop, I'd love to go. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes we are at uh, at uh, Modeler Moon in A Lab. It's okay. uh, close to the I Museum. We have also workshop there or in Den Haag, and uh, yeah, we can uh, you can join and film and see and make something. It's possible. Well, this is really cool. Thank you so much. Yes, no problem. Thank you.